What's hyperthermia? Heat, heating up your body. How do they do it? Hot tubs. So in the previous episode, we talked about heat shock proteins, and I was kind of going in the direction of talking about gut bacteria and how not only are heat shock proteins important in our bodies, but they're even important in our gut for healthy gut bacteria. So in other words, saunas have the additional benefit of improving your gut bacteria, the health of your gut bacteria through these heat shock proteins. I kind of didn't really get to that punchline in the last episode, but I wanted to make sure you really got that. That's one of the important benefits of a sauna. Gut bacteria have heat shock proteins and we improve our gut bacteria through saunas. But what about hot tubs? Do hot tubs have the same benefits? Let's talk about that today. Compare hot tubs to saunas. Got a paper here, 1999, New England Journal of Medicine. It's an article called Hot Tub Therapy for Type 2 Diabetes. Um, it says this doctor used a hot tub to, stim to simulate the beneficial effects of exercise. That was his goal. He only used eight patients, but, you know, this is a kind of a preliminary study, 1999. 30 minutes a day, six days a week, three weeks. So just three weeks. And what did he find? Every single one of these patients had lower hemoglobin A1C after these three weeks. What does that mean? That means their blood sugar was down. Hemoglobin A1C is a marker for inflammation and blood sugar, long-term long inflammation, long-term blood sugar. If your blood sugar is too high, you're going to have a lot of inflammation. You're going to have a lot of a higher level of hemoglobin A1C, HA1C. Um, it's a great biomarker. It's a great thing to test for your blood. What else? Well, I mean, these people had diabetes, by the way, for like 10 years, most of them. 14 years, 13 years, 9 years, 9 years. So here's another thing. Fasting glucose, their blood sugar, before and after, before 207, 207, after 156. So after this hot tub therapy, it was almost cut, you know, it was not quite cut in half, but I mean, it was pretty substantially decreased in this person. 197 before hot tub therapy, 155 after. So we see a lot of this. A lot of the patients there in that study, again, small study, but big decrease in blood sugar, and definitely a consistent decrease in hemoglobin A1C. Let's move to 2002 in the, Viet, the, Vien, the Viennese Clinical Weekly Journal. Um, it's in German, but it's, this part is translated to uh, English. The title of this paper is called Human Monocyte Stimulation. Monocytes, those are immune cells. Immune cell stimulation by experimental whole body hyperthermia. What's hyperthermia? Heat. Heating up your body. How did they do it? Hot tubs. They said they evaluated 12 healthy people, immersed them in a hot tub. They call it a hot water bath. Um, and then they looked at endotoxin receptor CD14. CD14. Endotoxins. So if you've got a lot of bad gut bacteria, unhealthy gut bacteria, one of the things they do is they secrete a toxin called endotoxin. You can look it up. Or you can search LPS, lipopolysaccharide. That's one of the endotoxins. And that's one of the reasons they're bad. LPS causes a lot of inflammation. So what's interesting is this endotoxin receptor increased after hot tub immersion, after hot tub therapy. How long did they do it? I can't remember. Three hours after hyperthermia. Okay. Um, anyways, they're using a hot tub. They're finding this increased levels of these receptors to pull out these bad toxins, these bacterial toxins, endotoxins. So in other words, this therapy, heating up your body through a hot tub, you know, it probably changes your gut bacteria because of the heat shock proteins, which we'll talk about in one more second, but it also removes these toxins. It increases the receptors on the surface of your cells to grab them out, to grab out endotoxins. They conclude that the thermal effect of fever which they're mimicking through the hot tub, directly activates monocytes, immune cells, which increases their ability to respond to bacterial challenge. Okay, let's talk about heat shock proteins and wrap this up. 2015, the Journal of Current Opinions in Clinical Nutrition and Metabolic Care. <laughs> um, 
Heat shock proteins and heat therapy for type 2 diabetes. It's a review, pros and cons. All right, review paper 2015. And again, I really want you to realize here, hot tubs, people are using hot tubs, and this paper especially focuses on that. And what I like about this review is it compares hot tubs to saunas. And of course, it's in the context of just diabetes, and there's a lot of other benefits, but let's look at it. Heat therapy, such as saunas and hot tubs, have become increasingly regular therapeutic practices around the world, this paper starts off by saying. Because there's so much evidence, there's so much data, it's so beneficial, it can't be ignored. The use of heat therapy in people with type 2 diabetes revealed a, a striking reduction in glycated hemoglobin. That's hemoglobin A1C, that's what we've been talking about. In other words, it decreases inflammation, decreases that blood sugar. Um, heat therapy reduces fasting glycemia, reduces blood sugar again. Body weight, adiposity, how much fat you have, it actually reduces your fat. Animal studies have indicated that nitric oxide and the increase in heat shock proteins is, are involved. We've talked about heat shock proteins, we've not talked about nitric oxide. I'll bring them back up again because I want to talk about um, infrared, of course, and we'll save that for the next episode, but um, insulin sensitivity, inflammation, vasomotricity is increased. In other words, like how healthy are your blood vessels? And so they're, that's ba their real conclusion here, I mean, if you look through this paper, is basically that saunas and hot tubs are the same in terms of the health benefits. Now, personally, I don't, I'm not totally sold on that. I think saunas are better because you get more sweating. And here's the other reason. So they talk about cautions in your, using heat therapy, saunas or hot tubs. The cautions are pregnancy, obviously, um, anhydrosis. In other words, if you have like a... a an inability to sweat. If you have some condition uh, where your body doesn't sweat, you want to avoid hot tub therapy or saunas. Um, certain medications, of course. Unstable plaques in the arteries, you want to avoid hot tub therapies or the saunas. And then finally, allergies to potassium peroxide monosulfate. And it says for hot tubs only. What's that? It's a chemical that's identified as a cause of widespread recalcitrant severe dermatitis in certain people. Dermatitis, that's skin inflammation. So in other words, there's a chemical commonly found in hot tubs. It can cause some inflammation. And that's one of the challenges with hot tubs, right? Because you're, gonna, you're basically creating a pool for bacteria to grow. So you have to have all these extra chemicals. So I say, go with the, go with the sauna. But if all you have is a hot tub, you're going to have benefits. Again, I think the minimum effective dose is, I mean, there's, the more you sit in it, per, the more, you know, the more times per week you sit in the sauna or the hot tub, you're going to get more benefits. That's the research. But I think the minimum effective dose is probably three times per week, at least 10 or 15 minutes a time. But again, I prefer saunas. Let's talk about infrared saunas next time.